12 frets, 14 frets, square shoulders, round shoulders, where does the Dreadnought come from? On this week's Alvarez TV, we're chatting everything Dreadnought, the guitars we love. I couldn't resolve. I know. I just go and get. I just. I, I don't I know think what happens. Might, might be something I need therapy with. <laughs> <laughs> resolve therapy. Just Never go resolve. Get that last chord. So you can't. I can't. I can't round the circle. I heard that's how Mozart's dad got him out of bed. But he didn't round his circle. I think he used to go dun 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 dun. I did resolve. And he's like running down the stairs. <laughs> that was just a myth. Ah, uh, baby. Yeah. Hey everybody. Hi guys. Welcome back to the show. How are you doing? How are you doing, mate? Good, mate. How are yeah, you doing? Doing well. Mm -hmm. Good day. We've got some dreadnoughts. My favourite. My favourite. Are they? I think so. I thought you loved your parlour. I do love my parlour. I love my parlour yeah. for a sitting in the house noodling guitar. But my favourite guitar of all the guitars that I've got is my IE version of this. DYMR. Which is just stunning. It's just a great guitar. Big, but why bold. do you like dreadnoughts? I think it's a bit like you. It's like that kind of, they just have that boldness, don't they? they have that character, they have that volume, the great strummers, the great the pickers. Size as well. once you, for me, once I'm used to this size, I do love OMs. I've never found a part of to fall in love with. I mean, they're all comfy. I, I get it around the house. But I think anything else, I just feel as though I'm sort of swampy. I don't know why. It's just like, it's like, I like, but I do like all of that tone and that, yeah, like reach and you know all the the bass and all that sort of stuff. I mean, it's just like uh, it's a funny old name, Dreadnought, though. It is a funny name. Do you know what it is? No idea. Something to do with a ship or something? Is it? A yeah, ship? it was a ship. Okay, a warship. Mm -hmm. And this was the biggest guitar of the time, and the Dreadnought was, was the, the biggest, biggest ship. ship. So they 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 just kind of call it call it a Dreadnought, really. Or and I, I believe that predated Martin's Dreadnought. So they. I think we've mentioned it in the past. So what are we talking about here? What kind of time frame is this? The early 20th century? Martin in the early 19, say 1915, 16, 17, all around that time, they were making guitars for a retail company called Ditson. I think we've mentioned that You before. mentioned this before. Yeah. Ditson. Were they, they were American kind of, what, like a chain store that, or I something? I think they had a or? chain store, they had music shops. I think they had a, probably a department store as well, in my memory. All right. Might be wrong. Somebody can question us. And we're going down the Martin history, which there are so many knowledgeable people yeah. around Martin. But basically, we're talking about the Dreadnought, in my, in my memory anyway. They were making guitars for Ditson. Somebody at Ditson, a guy called Harry Hunt, wanted a bigger guitar for volume was it like a i don't know was it was something going on musically at that time or was it, it was sort of there was a hawaiian music kind of um popularity in, in the mid-teens in so, so when i think about hawaiian music i sort of hear like pedals well lap steel pedal steel but it must have been before that so it was a different type of yeah well there was ukuleles became very popular mm -hmm. in, in around that time and then there was slide guitar sort of became popular Ah, the slide of the and, okay and it was a sort of Hawaiian sort of sound. Ah. And then as bands started playing together, as we know, everybody wanted more volume. There was radio performances and maybe somebody playing lead or so I wanted more volume. But mm. this guy called Harry Hunt, who worked, I think he worked in the New York store of Ditton. Right. He wanted this big, we had this idea for a bigger, louder guitar and Martin made it. And I believe 
they started shipping them in 1916 or 17. I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. And that became the dreadnought. But Martin did not have that in their lineup. It was purely a Ditson. Let me model. get this right. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, when I think about early guitars, I think about, you know, the sort of old blues guys. I think about Robert Johnson mm -hmm. and those kind of parlor shapes. Mm -hmm. So they would have been a, like this, they would have been a 12 fret Correct. joint, right? Yeah. So when, when they came along, did they come as a 14 fret or were they still a 12 fret? So the first dreadnoughts, so the, all the Ditsons were a slope shoulder ah, so 12 they, fret. So they looked like this? In my knowledge anyway. Right. So they looked like this. That was the original dreadnought ah. with a slotted headstock. Yes. And Martin made that and they didn't sell. They saw like a handful of them, saw, saw like 14 or 15 pieces in the first five years or something. They just, it was just too big. Wow. Oh, you know, Parler, you know, the O-shaped Martin was the first one. It was a small body guitar. Then right. they slightly got bigger when they went to a double O and triple O and, uh, you know, became the OM. Right. Or that as well, which was just a different um, scale length. This was like an anomaly. It was like, like a revolution. Really, yeah, and, I mean, yeah. so this guy, Harry Hunt, I mean, he... They, they didn't sell well, and then he gave them another go. He asked them again to make them like in, night, in the mid-1920s, or 1923 or 1924 or something, and they made some more up until, I, I, in my memory, 1930-ish, and then they stopped. And, and the Ditson retail company went out of business in 1931. They signed, applied for liquidation. So I guess that's a time dust balls coming in and, and, and the recession, all that sort of stuff. In Martin's... Um, Thinking, no need to go bigger than a triple O, mm -hmm. or you'd have too much bass to deal with. There'd be, you know, there'd be too much frequency going on, too much power. But there was a change of heart somehow, and I don't know that story of why Martin embraced Ditson's idea or Harry Hunt's idea. So Ditson went out of business '31, and Martin came out with their first dreadnought, I believe, in 1931, which was that, similar to theirs. Again, didn't sell great. I believe the first time it came out in a brochure, first brochure I've seen with, a, with, a, with one of these in it was mm -hmm. in 1935, and it was called the famous Dreadnought bass guitar. Still very big and gaining popularity, but still not so popular. Somehow, in that time, and again, I don't know why they did this, but it went from that to this in 1934. And then this appeared in the brochure in 1935 as the famous Dreadnought bass guitar. as a 14th fret, more square shoulders rather than the slope shoulders. Because essentially the lower bout of, the, of these guitars is the same. It's the same, right? Yeah. It's only... It's, a, it's the shape. And this one is very slightly narrower. But the major difference, this guitar this way is an inch, nearly, it's two, in, our, in our language it's two centimetres. Mm -hmm. Three quarters of an inch, slightly more. So they basically... Correct. In order to get to the Correct. 14th fret. They made the body shorter and they changed the shape of this to make it more acute. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's a 12th fret and a 14th fret exist. Purely, in my, in my knowledge, and again, I'm happy to be corrected, is they made this tighter mm -hmm. and it came here and it allowed them to get 14th fret clear, clear of the body. And that's what changed the shape. And let's change the tone. Well, the tone changes because when they did that, this, the position of this changed. I believe in that time there was lots of things going on in the mid-30s around the construction inside of it. Experiment with different bracing Correct. and stuff. Yeah. And the position of the X brace. When the body shape changed and this, this came forward because you know, they're keeping a similar scale length. And there may have been differences in scale lengths originally, but that's why we have these two shaped dreadnoughts. That's the original. This is 934, and they basically made the body shorter to accommodate two extra frets because their other models were going to 14s. But that's it. They, 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 this is shorter by three quarters of an inch to an inch on ours. I haven't measured a Martin. I don't. We don't have those here, obviously. That's the story. That's why we have it. The slope is an original dreadnought shape, and it morphed into a 14 square shoulder. In 1934, it was in their 1935 brochure as the famous Dreadnought bass isn't guitar. It, isn't it, it fascinating? It all came though? from Mr. Harry Hunt. Harry Hunt? If Harry Hunt hadn't have gone back and said, I'm going to give that Dreadnought another try. So he was the guy from Ditson? Yeah. Was the buyer or something? I think it was a manager of their New York store or something. And presumably he was being pressed by New York musicians. 
Maybe, maybe they walked in wanting louder guitars, why they didn't take off. But after 1935, when this came out, they really started taking off. Just a they game started, changer. I think people just realized, and, and maybe, and again, somebody could let us know this, maybe whatever they did with the bracing, that they got the tone of it right. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, you know, masses of bass frequency like they, they feared. And it was actually a very powerful, nice, balanced instrument. You know, lots of air volume going on. Isn't it absolutely fascinating about sort of fashion and music? You know, how that, which we now perceive to be the standard yeah. guitar shape, would have then been perceived as being something kind of revolutionary and, and not everybody would immediately kind of embrace because they would think it would be, well... Yeah, and, and thank goodness they tried and tried. You know, it's like that and the early ones of them with, with Ditson. I mean, that's 105 years old. Yeah, that this design. design. That design. Yeah. To many of us, it's the, it's the best thing since sliced bread, mm. which is probably later. <laughs> 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 but um, it is, and it hasn't changed. You know, we, we all play around with, with the bracing or our thinking on the on the construction. Yeah. But that's it, man. They, I mean, they got it so right. It's this a is, bit like the is... Strat, right? Like they got this, you know, Leo Fender got the Strat yeah. so right. When you think of how much is in a Strat, Mm. And the, the ergonomics and the okay. pickups and the, yeah. like what you can do with it and make it sound like a jazz guitar or telecaster yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, why haven't we changed? And we've tried to change and there's other, you know, there's been other body shapes, obviously, but mainly they're based on Martins. You mm -hmm. know, we, we shouldn't be ashamed of saying that. That's what the legacy is and, yeah. and where we all, the heritage of all of our instruments. They got it right. Yes, we come up with different bracing, different body shapes, tighter waist, bigger lower bouts, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. or grand auditoriums, you know, and Bob Teller designed that, which is, you know, beautiful guitar as well. It's it's what they did in certainly the 1800s and then certainly the early 30s. It's kind of fixed guitar, acoustic guitar sound forever, really. And then these two, I think um, we're going to do some A-B testing. Yeah. We did make a video of about sustain between a 12th and a 14th fret. Because there was a question from... Uh, Mr. Herschel. Yeah, Herschel, yeah. yes, yeah. that's so right. We'll put a link into, into that video but to, to see which sustains longer between a 12th and a 14th. And actually you get a burst of volume more from a 12th yeah. from, from, the, from the instant response. But a 14 usually because of its structural integrity usually drives the string longer and you get a longer note if you need that. But these sound great, nice and round because of the position of that bridge, but mm. we'll do some A and B testing. And then also, in line with, with, with the wonderful Dreadnought was the use of Rosewood. Obviously, Rosewood was, made, was, was used right up through the 1800s. When you stick it on a body this big, just like, whoa. So it, would, it, would it have been Brazilian up until a certain time? So they used um, Brazilian, I believe, until 1969. In 1969, I think, they introduced Indian Indian rosewood. Indian and Indian rosewood is, I guess it was um, there was an abundance of it around. There still is. It's it's very well managed. East Indian rosewood grows in the south of India in the monsoon forests down there. There's like lots of it. Great plantation wood, and it lasts forever because they they replant and they look after it. Yeah, and great sounding. Obviously different, and probably many would say not as good as. Brazilian, but we can't we can't use that at the moment. I've only ever played one guitar with a Brazilian, and mm -hmm. it was a Yairi. Yeah, but it was a Parla. Yeah. So I've never actually heard a Dread. Well, well I've heard one. Yeah. Sure, recorded a hundred times probably, but I've yeah. never actually sat and played one. I bet it's quite marvelous. Reflection is just, you know, it's just just blooms. It really does. I played. I've been in Martin a couple of times, and I played some things they have in the museum there and it's just like amazing what sort of pre-war pre-war all wow. that sort of that's stuff the, that's the, yeah. the thing in it yeah but actually as well as um martin guitar company we should not forget mr harry hunt who went back and said you know i'm sure this thing is going to work let's make let's make them again and what then, was that is that early 20s do you say early 20s like 23 24 or something right because the, the first lot didn't they saw like a 14 or 15 or something in the first few years. Yeah. But he thought, he believed in it, you know, and he went back and said, let's give it another go. It, again, they didn't sell that many, but somebody must know this. Somebody in Martin, when Ditson were going out of business, somebody made the decision, well, let's put this out, even though it hadn't sold well. And I'd love to know if anybody knows that.
Somebody said, we believe in it too. It'll catch on eventually. Incredible. And now they've built, goodness knows how many. <laughs> but anyway, we've got, a, we've got an MD70 BG, and we've got an MDR70 um, yes. SB, 12th fret, and a 14th fret Rosewood Dreadnoughts. And we'll A and B them so you can hear the difference. And if you want to hear the sustain thing, uh, we'll, we'll put the link yeah. to, to that. And uh, it's really interesting. Nice one, mate. All right. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. See you later. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. If you want to watch more videos like this one, click the video on the screen now.